We all know the importance of proteins in building muscle, as it literally is the building block. However, not all of us know the importance of protein when it comes to losing fat. Today's video will provide an overview on why a high protein diet is great for fat loss, and we'll go over each study in support of this. Then we'll delve into the health aspects of a high protein diet. Be sure to watch the entire video as it may help you on your fat loss journey. Now, before we move on, let's talk about what protein is. Protein is one of the three micronutrients alongside carbs and fats that fuel our activities. It is a structural nutrient that helps build up tissues in the body such as hairs, muscle, bone, and virtually every other body part. The one that we care about is probably muscles. Our muscles are made up of proteins that are composed of 20 different types of amino acids. The essential amino acids are the ones our bodies cannot synthesize, such as histidine, leucine, isoleucine. So we'll have to rely on foods such as fish, chicken, and beans, etc. This is why having protein variety is so important, as you must get 9 out of 20 amino acids from your diet. If you're holding a bottle of whey protein right now, you're holding at least all 9 essential amino acids. If you're holding a bottle of BCAAs right now, you're holding at least 3 essential amino acids. I'll talk about BCAAs in another video and why it may not be the best investment for you. There are three main benefits for taking a high protein diet. Number one, high thermic effect. Number two, satiating effect. And number three, muscle maintenance during fat loss. Let's go over each in sequence. Point number one is the high thermic effect of protein. And all data can be found in this paper right here. It's essentially another way of saying our bodies take more calories to digest proteins than say vegetables. In fact, our body works significantly harder to digest a piece of chicken than a slice of bread per 100 calories. Eating protein is a passive way of helping you burn more calories and reach your caloric deficit. Secondly, here's an example of the many studies that show the satiating effect of proteins. This study demonstrates that protein are more filling than both carbs and fats as people in the high protein group lost significantly more weight than people in the control group, so the low protein group. In a sense, consuming more protein will make you feel full sooner, meaning that you will consume less calories overall. When participants of a different study increased their protein intake to 30% of their total calories intake, their total calories intake dropped, supporting the conclusion from the first paper. Additionally, those who are in the high protein group experienced greater weight loss due to calories reduction. Last but not the least, let's look at the effect of a high protein diet on preserving muscle mass during weight loss. When we lose weight, we lose both fat and muscle. Now that's certainly bad news for us, however here's the good news. Consuming a high protein diet, typically from 1.6 gram to 2.2 gram per kilogram body weight, will help you minimize your muscle loss during weight loss as it changes the composition of the weight that is lost. Many research have shown that increased protein intake reduces lean body mass loss. As we can see in this study by Samuel et al, maintaining a high protein diet reduces the amount of lean muscle loss. The control group lost 1.3 kg lean muscle mass more than the high protein group. Concluding from the evidence that we have, I think it's sufficient to say that most of us could benefit from a high protein diet during weight loss. So how high should the protein intake be? The recommended protein intake for an average person in both Canada and the US is 0.8 gram per kilogram body weight. Now that's way way too low for people who go to the gym and chase gains. A 2017 meta-analysis compiled 49 studies in this area with 1,863 participants to look at evidence-based protein recommendation for those who go to the gym regularly with either strength or hypertrophy gains in mind. The study recommends 1.6 to 2.2 gram per kilogram body weight. Let's see an example of a 70 kg individual. If we base this on the US and Canada recommendation, this person should only be taking 56 grams of protein. If we're basing it on the adjusted protein intake uh, of the parameter 1.6 to 2.2 gram per kilogram body weight, then this person should be taking 112 to 154 grams of protein. However, this estimation becomes inaccurate if your body fat is high, let's say over 25%, as you'll be taking in more proteins than your body actually needs. 
In this case, I recommend uh, going with the lower number, such as 1.6 gram instead of the 2.2 grams. Many people may find that their body cannot get used to a high protein intake right away, but that's okay. I recommend gradually increasing your protein intake until your body gets used to the range. You may have heard about high protein diet causing damage to your organs, such as kidney. Let's see if this is supported by literature. In a 2005 study, Martin et al. examined the effects of protein intake on renal function, so kidney function. They conclude that protein restriction may be appropriate for treating kidney damage, but there is no significant evidence for detrimental effects of high protein intakes on kidney function in healthy individuals with a high protein Western diet. Another study looked at the effect of high protein diets in athletes and concluded that protein intakes under 2.8 gram per kilogram does not impair kidney function in well-trained athletes. 2.8 grams is almost 3 grams, and that's very, very high. Most of us can't get to that number, even if we try. For resistance-trained males, a 2.5 to 3.3 gram per kilogram intake for 12 months have not been shown to have negative health effects. However, these males have several years of experience with resistance training, so their body might have already adapted to a high-protein lifestyle to tolerate such a high intake. Concluding from the evidence, if you have pre-existing kidney problems, I would highly recommend against taking a high-protein diet. Otherwise, taking protein way above the fat loss and hypertrophy requirements seem to show no negative health effects. Don't forget to take other micronutrients as well, such as fat and carbs, which are critical for our body functions. Eat enough nutrient-dense foods to meet our micronutrients as well. There are so many important micronutrients, but I don't want to make this video for too long, so we'll tackle them another time. I dug so many holes for myself today. BCAA, micronutrient, what else? That's all for today. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you have any questions or feedbacks, please comment them down below. As always, if you find my content helpful, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more science-based videos such as this one. Have a great day and see you next time.